Welcome to Dr. Warwick's podcast channel. Warwick is a practicing cardiologist and author with a passion for improving care by helping patients understand their heart health through education. Warwick believes educated patients get the best health care. Discover and understand the latest approaches and technology in heart care and how this might apply to you or someone you love. Hi, my name is Dr. Warwick Bishop and welcome to my podcast and video cast station. I have a special guest today, Associate Professor David Cahoon, who is co-president of the prevention arm of the Cardiac Society of Australia and New Zealand and a board member of the Heart Foundation of Australia and an experienced cardiologist, both with clinical and research backgrounds. David, welcome and thank you for joining me. My pleasure, Warwick. Look, uh, we've had the chance to talk a little bit off air about a recent debate that I was lucky enough and uh, privileged to be involved with, where we were talking the merits or not of cholesterol and whether doctors have it right. You'll Mm -hmm. recall, or for those listening, uh, there were three uh, people on the opposing team who were saying that doctors didn't really have it right. I was on the team that sort of suggested we did. On the opposing team, we had Ross Walker, who really led off with uh, a discussion about Marianne DeMassey, who uh, was central in the Catalyst program a number of years ago, which created a little bit of controversy and certainly a lot of discussion. Ross also discussed about the overuse of statins. Ross Walker is a well-known cardiologist in Australia. Anthony Shappy was the second speaker with an interest in nutrition, a background in uh, professional sport and as a, a uh, registrar in neurosurgery in Western Australia at the moment, he really focused on fructose and inflammation as the drivers for plaque mm. formation and really dismissed that cholesterol was problematic and, and suggested there wasn't much research for that. Mm. Mal Hotra is well recognised as one of the cardiologists who has been influential in driving a Uh, change in the way we think about fat within the diet. He's active on social media platforms regularly and Mm. really acts to raise awareness about uh, Big Pharma and our interpretation of data. And his uh, presentation within the debate was really around, are we interpreting the data appropriately for individuals and the role of Big Pharma? So, David, what I'd like to do is give you the opportunity to feedback from your own area of expertise on what some of your thoughts are with regard to some of those positions taken. Why don't we start with Ross Walker and his comments about uh, Marianne Damasi, Dr. Damasi, and his comments about overuse of statins. Well, uh, we can uh, just quickly dismiss that. I thought Norman Swan did the uh, did a great job criticising his own network, the ABC, pointing out it was... Uh, factually wrong, uh, selective asking people who aren't experts. And Marion DeMassey is a PhD uh, doctor who uh, has no expertise whatsoever in coronary heart disease treatment, etc. Yeah, she's a journalist. And uh, like journalists, she got a story, she got ratings, but she did not help the population. Stories like she had on the ABC has been done in Sweden and been done in Denmark. And with brilliant tracking of the population what we see is people stopping life-saving medication increase heart attacks increase strokes increase mortality this is what happens from bad journalism bad science we call it fake science and a number of the other members on the panel and ross walker when they say there is no good evidence what they really say is i'm not an expert i don't know the evidence i haven't got a clue what about nobel prize winners uh, you know, like Brown and Goldstein, who helped us understand metabolism, full stop. You know what? When Ross Walker made this outrageous statement that only one out of 19 people are on statins need to be on it, no evidence to support that. Great grab for the uninformed, but is inappropriate for a doctor who is meant to be interested in prevention, you know, the average LDL cholesterol, this is not cholesterol, it's the LDL particle, is in Queensland, Sunshine Coast University. You could say it's an oxymoron. It's not a very learned place. 
the average level published in the BMJ by the professor of medicine up there, 2.7 millimoles per litre one year after heart attack when they come back in again. Absolute disgrace. Not at the target levels of the 1980s. You know what? So when Ross says outrageous comments like that, he's forgotten he's talking to doctors. This is not to the uh, freedom fighters down in Canberra, the anti-science 10% of the community. Stop, please, Ross, don't align yourself with those people who are anti-science. I think you said something else, LDL, lowering LDL we need to make hormones. Oh, my God, I thought basic science 101, I would not be happy with a medical student. Cholesterol is the backbone of the steroid hormones. Of course it is, Warwick. Every single cell in the body makes excess cholesterol. We need HDL to remove it so that it can be taken back to the liver and broken down and then recycled and packaged into VLDL. So to say you need LDL, that is basic, basic wrong. You know what? It's amazing. Brown and Goldstein, please ring, read the stuff that's been published by Nobel Prize winners. They know a little bit. LDL, remember, VLDL is secreted by the liver to transport fat around the body or triglycerides to be more specific because blood is dilute salt water, as you remember, Warwick. So fat will cause fat embolism if it goes into the bloodstream. So it's lipoproteins, the apoproteins make it dissolve. As it goes around and around, triglycerides are removed and we get the waste product, end product, LDL cholesterol, and no, LDL particle, we measure, we can measure the protein part of it, we can measure the cholesterol component. It is there to be waiting around to be taken back up in the liver. Brown and Goldstein, Nobel Prize winners, 1984, demonstrated that it's the receptors on the liver which are key to appropriate metabolism. Our statins, our azetamide, our low saturated fat, our PCSK9 inhibitors, all increase the receptors on the liver to remove the LDL particle from the blood so it doesn't get into the vessel wall to cause atherosclerosis. Please, when you talk about blood cholesterol, remember that is just, it doesn't exist as cholesterol in the blood. It's part of lipoproteins. Let's get in to the 1960s and 70s understanding of lipoprotein metabolism and get away from the baby talk of cholesterol and talk about we need LDL for hormones. Wrong, wrong, wrong. When we say silly things that are so wrong, no wonder the public's confused. No wonder doctors listening to the telecast who aren't experts get confused. I mean, please, if you don't know, don't say. Just say, I'm not sure. Let's be honest. Honesty is the best policy. And me, please, uh, I'll stop there. Yeah, sorry. What? Yeah, okay. me, uh, your uh, mic is also uh, reverbing a little bit, so don't get too close to it. It's sort of yeah. um, giving yeah. some static. Look, what are your thoughts about uh, Dr. Chaffee's comments on fructose and inflammation? And mm. there's not a lot of evidence to support that raised cholesterol is a problem. And I think he tried to cite a paper that uh, in healthy individuals over a certain age, uh, cholesterol levels are actually higher. So fructose inflammation and yeah. is all the old good yeah. or bad. Yeah, again, Dr. Chaffee, uh, what's his background again? Uh, he uh, was a body, he's a bodybuilder. Yeah, he's a bodybuilder. Yeah, yeah, so he obviously knows and it's all natural. Um, he's a neurosurgical registrar. Wow, if you want to know about uh, your uh, sore toe, ask a neurosurgeon, ask a cardiologist. Totally inappropriate, his background. He's still in training to be a neurosurgeon. Why on earth is he parading as a cholesterol expert? Does he know more, more than, uh, you know, uh, Brown, Goldstein, you know, other Nobel Prize winners, Pete Evans? I mean, really, Pete Evans? Yeah, he thinks he knows more than Pete Doherty. I mean, really and truly, oh, there's no evidence. Of course you don't know the evidence. You're a neurosurgeon. You spend your time in scrubs. And besides, you're a very late life uh, oh, registrar. Hold on there, David. Your, your mic is really breaking up badly. Okay, that... I'll say it again. The person you said who was an expert, he is a late life registrar, right? Okay. He's in his 40s. 
He's a neurosurgeon. Yes, that is not the background to be an expert in uh, lipid metabolism, epidemiology, uh, physiology to do with plaque regression. No wonder when, Warwick, when you talked about regression of plaques, there was silence from the other team. I don't think they knew what regression of plaque was. So when someone says oh, there is no evidence, we well, say, well, what evidence did you look at? Of course, you don't know the evidence unless you're an expert in the area. Um, I, I think he also said something ridiculous. Uh, the Framingham study showed that uh, low cholesterol increased coronary artery disease. Oh, look, you can't even read the original data. Misquoted Castelli. I've heard Castelli talk on many, many occasions. I've, I've been involved in many talks, as you know, talking about the data from Framingham, the Interheart study, the seven country study, also misquoted as well. I cannot stand smear campaign and say, and lies, particularly complaining about people who have died who can't answer the smears. So poor science. Um, neurosurgeon, yes, if I had a neurosurgical problem, I might have a chat to him. But when we talk about cholesterol lowering, it seems he knows nothing about the Australian lipid trial and the meta-analysis by Tony Keach. For every one millimole reduction of LDL particle, LDL cholesterol is the way we measure it, 25% less heart attacks, 20% less strokes, 10% lower death rate. And today, as you know, Warwick, unless you get at least two millimole reduction of LDL, you're not trying. To say there is no evidence that lowering LDL cholesterol, get away from this cholesterol baby stuff, um, LDL cholesterol particle is just flies. In this, it's just unbelievable. People, people could be say such obviously wrong statement. And to infer the Heart Foundation of Australia, the American Heart Association, the European Societies of Cardiology, all have it wrong all the research from uh these you know people who have dedicated their life to do clinical research is uh un it, you can't believe it because it wasn't given by it wasn't done by a grant from a socialist government it's just so nonsense i can't believe the anti-science promulgated that uh a couple of nights ago only you and stephen myers actually held the flag of honesty David, I'll ask you to make sure you don't shout too much because every time you do, there's a reverb down your mic. So I know you're excited, okay. uh, but let me ask you to come back to inflammation. One thing that Dr. Chaffee did raise was inflammation. We know from the Cantos study yeah. and we know from some of the culture scene work that inflammation is certainly uh, important. Where where are your thoughts on that? And uh, well, what, yeah. how would you frame that? Now, well, we've known since the mid 80s that cholesterol in your diet per se has a minor effect on atherosclerosis, full stop. We know the LDL lipoprotein is far more atherogenic cause than, I mean, atherosclerosis is like a pimple inside your artery. We know it is far more aggressive, active, if it is modified. Modified being is glycosylated, oxidized, or hydrogenate, it doesn't matter. All LDL particles are atherogenic. All are, they're waste products. If they are modified, if you're a smoker and it's oxidized, of course it's worse. This is not new. But to say it is inflammation only, it just, it's just, I mean, it just defies that people could be so silly. We know there's more than 60 independent risk factors and risk markers that cause coronary artery disease. There are five key ones. We know when there is inflammation because you've had a cigarette, because you're anxious, before you're depressed, we all know these in, uh, factors. They make the endothelium less uh, impermeable, if you like, more leaky, and the LDL more atherogenic. But to say it's all, all inflammation is so simple, I would be very unhappy with a medical student first year. So let me know. Uh, let me yeah. roll past uh, the second speaker and, and invite you to interpret uh, Dr. Malhotra's comments about whether we're interpreting the data appropriately and whether there's benefit within the trials that really justify the therapy that we're applying to people. And after the interpretation of the data, do you, you're welcome to make a comment on Big Pharma because Dr. Malhotra quite reasonably said that Big Pharma have a vested interest and it is hard to sidestep that. Uh, yeah, well, there's a big difference between 
uh, the uh, cardiologists, researchers who do the trials with funding given to pay for the trials and to say big farm are corrupt. I mean, left-wing propaganda, leave it at the door, your political bend, okay? Uh, leave it at the door that you are so pure and holy because, one, you don't do any research, Mahap doesn't do any research, uh, and criticises everyone else. It is an absolute disgrace that someone like him has a forum to say the work done like in Australia, our lipid trial. Yes, $20 million was given to the Heart Foundation to run the trial, independent safety and data monitoring committees, as it was in the Torcetrabid trial, which as, as uh, Philip Barter, our friend, ran, to say these independent committees, the, the uh, expert people who look at the data are corrupt because there was a grant given to the independent group. No one pocketed the money. It just simply paid for wages of staff is absolutely misunderstanding of how these research trials are involved. I was involved in our Australian lipid trial, 9,014 patients followed for six years. As you know, this was the first trial in the world which showed lowering the LDL by one millimole per litre decreased mortality, total mortality by 3% in six years. In six years. These are people with average cholesterol levels. We didn't know that. Now, if you had diabetes and you had low HDL, the numbers needed to treat to prevent a cardiovascular event or death was only 10 in a five-year period. Now to say, oh, because our BMS gave $20 million, grossly unfunding, to the Heart Foundation, it ipso facto was corrupt, is just ridiculous, illogical nonsense. Now, is Mahatra going to say in the same thing? If you get a government grant from a socialist government, you are left-wing corrupt as well. I mean, really and truly, Read the Institute of Medicine's uh, 300 pages on vested interests and how you can minimise that. Um, you know, I don't think people who throw stones, be very careful, right? That's a very old saying. Okay, be, people in glass houses should not throw stones. Mahutra, as you mentioned, let's put it into perspective. He does not believe vaccination is of any value whatsoever. He's an anti-vaxxer. Oh, you know. The anti-vaxxers who are down in Canberra, you know, saying vaccination kills more people than it saves. I okay, mean, okay. We may... You know he doesn't believe in treatment of diabetes, by the way, either. It doesn't work. We'll, and... uh, we'll sidestep uh, other aspects of Dr. Malhotra's um, practice and opinions, but what we might do is just wrap up there. You've had the chance, and I really appreciate you dissecting okay. and commenting on the, the three speakers in the debate on the, the opposing team that I was on. But perhaps we just wrap up with a, this okay. process of coronary artery disease is incredibly complicated. The particles, the LDL particle, um, the lipoproteins, the interaction at a cellular microscopic level is insanely complicated, convoluted, and variable between individuals. I think it's just fantastic that we have the likes of people like yourself who have been involved in the research, close to the research to help guide uh, the likes of me who are open to best practice for our patients. Would you like to wrap up with anything, David? Yeah. Don't shout because of the feedback on your mic. <laughs> I won't shout. It'll be in small print. One, it is predominantly lifestyle disease on the background of genetics. So we know a Mediterranean type diet decreases first events by 30% within three year period. Beautiful study uh, in Spain. Two, if you've had a heart attack, a Mediterranean style diet, this is south of Italy or in Greece, decreases total mortality by 50% within the um, five years. Two, separate to that, Look at your omega-3 index. High intake of fish decreases risk of developing heart disease and the high omega-3 index protects you. Three, look at those risk factors proven to, if you improve them, prevent outcomes. You need to get your LDL cholesterol, which is LDL particles, down to less than 1.4. Consensus around the world, European society. It can be achieved. Please, you be enthusiastic. Your patients will be enthusiastic. They'll take the medication. Not only will they live longer, they will feel better. Always assess for depression using the PHQ-2 patient health questionnaire. 
depressed patients, life is miserable, they don't take your medication. That's 30% of our patients. So we have to be holistic with the W, not with holes, like some of our friends, holes everywhere. We look at the whole patient because coronary disease, as you say, Warwick, is very complex. It's lifestyle and the background of genetics, but we can make a huge difference to the natural history. Medicine is all about changing the natural history to improve survival and have happy, healthy lives. Remember, the pursuit of happiness is in the American Declaration of Independence. But they're very unhappy people. <laughs> Thank you so much for taking the time to share. I know, uh, and I've known you for years now, I know how passionate you are about helping people live as well as possible for as long as possible. I know you're so across this data. I really do appreciate that. For those listening, I hope you've got as much out of listening to Associate Professor David Cahoon as I have. <laughs> Uh, thank you so much for joining us okay. take care pleasure and bye for now okay bye you have been listening to another podcast from dr warwick visit his website at drwarwickbishop.com for the latest news on heart disease if you love this podcast feel free to leave us a review